Hello everyone! Welcome to the video course English File Pro Intermediate 4th Edition. Episode number 14, Unit 4, Part C. Hashtag Great Weekend. Here you work, I just say what to do. In this lesson, you learn how to use something, someone, anything, nothing, etc. You might know them quite well, but anyway, it's better to look at these type of words more carefully again and learn how to use them or just learn to use them. And as you can guess, the context of the lesson is weekend. But it's not like, what do you usually do at the weekend? No, not this time. Actually, we have pre-intermediate materials, so this time it will be more challenging. You will look at how people lie about their weekends on social media. And this is followed by one big part that is about ED and ING adjectives. Bored, boring, excited, exciting, interesting, interested, and so on. They are very interesting words because you can understand them easily when you hear or read them but when you try to use them, when you speak or write something, they can be a little bit confusing. And you know what I mean. Here you also have a pronunciation part that's not difficult at all, but it will be good to practice saying some words. Why not? And we have a speaking part, of course. We'll answer some questions together. And at the end, you watch a documentary like a, a very long video, big video. So, I don't know, I think it's time to start. But before we do it, I'd like to say thank you to everyone who is supporting my channel. And remember, these lessons are available only because of you. So, if you want to see more episodes, please join my Boosty or use donation alerts. You can find all the links in the description. It's very important. And. Part number one, reading. Part A, read four tweets about weekends. Which two do you think are true? Bob, 1972. New York for the weekend, amazing. Hashtag great weekend, hashtag no sleep. Tweet number two, Urban J, spent all day Sunday at work, then in bed at nine o'clock. Hashtag terrible weekend. Tweet number three, Topsy. Husband took me to Paris for lunch on Saturday. Hashtag best day out. Tweet number four, Betty. Sunday in the park with the family, picnic and games. Hashtag I love summer. To answer this question, you can use numbers like the tweet number one is true or the tweet number two is true or say just the name. I think Betty's tweet is true because or Bob's tweet is true because. Try to explain your choice. For example, I think Topsy's tweet is true because it's a usual thing to everyone just go to Paris for lunch. Why not? Everyone can do it and can afford it. Yeah? Right, guys? Okay, I'm kidding, but you get the idea how to explain. So now do this task and answer the question. Let's move on. Part B. Read the article, a boring weekend, then read the tweets again. Which do you think are probably not true and why? Look, when you read for the first time, don't pay much attention to the details, just the main idea. Just try to understand it. Read this article, then think who doesn't say the truth. Probably. If you don't change your opinion after reading, it's okay, because textbooks sometimes have strange tasks like this one. Now, read this article and then answer these two questions. A boring weekend? Don't tell anybody. A new survey has shown that 20% of British people tell lies 
about their weekend and social media. This survey by a travel website shows that people invent stories to make their lives appear more interesting than they really are. Psychologist Judy James, one of the organizers of the survey, said, When some people read their friends' posts and see their photos on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, they begin to feel jealous of them. They think that their friends are having a much more exciting life. So they invent details about their own weekend. One of the main reasons people give for inventing these stories is to have something to talk about on Monday morning at work or at school. This is because they don't want other people to think that they have a boring life. The most popular lies people tell are that they went to a party or went away for the weekend, and 3% of people even put on fake tan on Sunday night to make their colleagues think they've had a weekend away in the sun. One person in ten invents a romantic break with their partner. People aged 18 to 24 are the ones who most often tell lies on social media, and men lie more often than women. Only 20% of people interviewed said that they always told the truth in posts. Judy James said, Social media is becoming increasingly important in our lives, and it seems we are living one life online and another in reality. So when you're feeling jealous on a Saturday night because your best friend is having a romantic dinner with her boyfriend at Venice, stop and ask yourself, is she really there? Or is she just sitting at home feeling bored like me? Before the second task, let's look at some vocabulary from the text. A survey. To tell lies. Invent stories. Psychologist. Feel jealous. The main reason. Fake ten. A romantic break. Tell the truth. To seem. Now study the following vocabulary and then we move on. Part C. Read the article again, correct the wrong information. Number 1. 1 in 10 people sometimes lie about their lives on social media. Number 2. When people read about what their friends are doing, they are happy for them. Number 3. People invent stories about their weekend because they want their families to think they have exciting lives. Number four, some people put on fake tan on Sundays so that people at work think they look good. Number five, young women are the biggest liars. And number six, people's online lives are the same as their real lives. Now, read the article again and correct the wrong information. Let's go. A boring weekend. Don't tell anybody. A new survey has shown that 20% of British people tell lies about their weekend on social media. This survey by a travel website shows that people invent stories to make their lives appear more interesting than they really are. Psychologist Judy James, one of the organizers of the survey, said, When some people read their friends' posts and see their photos on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, they begin to feel jealous of them. They think that their friends are having a much more exciting life. So they invent details about their own weekend. One of the main reasons people give for inventing these stories is to have something to talk about on Monday morning at work or at school. This is because they don't want other people to think that they have a boring life. The most popular lies people tell are that they went to a party or went away for the weekend, 
and 3% of people even put on fake tan on Sunday night to make their colleagues think they've had a weekend away in the sun. One person in ten invents a romantic break with their partner. People aged 18 to 24 are the ones who most often tell lies on social media, and men lie more often than women. Only 20% of people interviewed said that they always told the truth in posts. Judy James said, Social media is becoming increasingly important in our lives, and it seems we are living one life online and another in reality. So when you're feeling jealous on a Saturday night because your best friend is having a romantic dinner with her boyfriend at Venice, stop and ask yourself, is she really there? Or is she just sitting at home feeling bored like me? Let's have a look at the answers. Number one. You see, one in five people sometimes lie about their lives on social media, not ten. Number two. When people read about what their friends are doing, they're jealous of them. Not happy for them, but jealous of them. Number three, people invent stories about their weekend because they want their colleagues or school friends to think they have exciting lives, but not the family. Number four, some people put on fake tan on Sundays so that people at work think they've had a weekend away in the sun. That's weird, but it's according to the article. And number five, young men are the biggest liars, not women. And number six, People's online lives are different, or we can say are very different from their real lives. Now we have a discussion. Try to use new vocabulary in your answers. D. Talk to a partner or talk to yourself in our case. Number one. What do you usually answer when people ask you, did you have a good weekend? Is it always true? And number two. When was the last time you had a really exciting weekend? What did you do. Okay, speaking of the question number one, I noticed a funny thing nowadays. People usually say, hey, I didn't have a weekend at all, meaning that they are working really hard. Speaking of me, nobody asks me that. I and my friends don't talk about spending weekends. We think this topic is quite boring. But actually, I think I'll be honest in this case if somebody asks me. I usually say one positive thing and one negative thing, like to balance it. And it's like I visited one interesting place, it was exciting, but the weather wasn't good. And speaking of the second question, uh, I think last time, it was a month ago, I and my girlfriend visited a place full of different kinds of fish and sea animals. Like a zoo, but everything is in water tanks. I hope you know what I mean. I had fun, actually. It was quite a nice day. We had, I don't know, some delicious meals, walked a lot, but the weather was terrible. It was snowing, it was windy and cloudy, but anyway, it was good. So, what about you? Can you answer these questions, but this time use your own ideas? Что ж, давайте смотреть. Скучные выходные? Не говори никому. Новый опрос показал, что, или исследование, опрос, ну, здесь больше survey, это больше как опрос людей там на улицах или социальный опрос, показал, что 20% людей в Британии, то есть они говорят неправду, врут про свои выходные в социальных сетях. Этот опрос, или просто опрос, сделанный, получается, сайтом, относящимся к путешествиям, ну, travel сайтом, Показывает, что люди, это у нас как бы дословно изобретают истории, ну, в смысле, придумывают истории. Так, вот этот отрывок, to make their lives appear more interesting, э, никак не перевести дословно, 
Это имеется в виду, они изобретают вот эти вот истории, чтобы их жизни казались более интересные, чем они на самом деле. Психолог у нас Джуди Джеймс, один из организаторов этого опроса, ну, сказала, когда люди читают э, посты своих друзей и смотрят на их фотографии в Фейсбуке, Твиттере или Инстаграме, они начинают чувствовать зависть э, по отношению к ним. Они думают, что их друзья, э, получается, что у их друзей вот прямо сейчас проходит или вообще в целом, ну, очень суперская жизнь, то есть очень интересная жизнь. Вот поэтому они приукрашивают, то есть придумывают некоторые детали про свои собственные выходные. Одна из основных причин, которые люди говорят, почему они придумывают эти истории, является, ну, чтобы у них было что-нибудь, о чем поговорить в понедельник утром на работе или в школе. И это потому, что они не хотят, чтобы другие люди думали, что у них скучная жизнь. Самое ну, как бы самые популярные лжи, или давайте так, самые популярные виды лжи, которые говорят люди, это они заключаются в том, что они, например, пошли на вечеринку или уехали куда-нибудь на выходные. Ну, то есть имеется в виду там в другой город или в другую страну, может быть. А вот здесь интересно, и 3% людей даже, и вен это даже, то есть наложили такой фейковый, Тен — это загар. То есть, я так понимаю, это средство, которое можно наложить на кожу, и у вас якобы как бы загар будет. Но фейк тен, то есть фейковый загар, получается, в воскресенье вечером, чтобы, ну, make think, ну, не то чтобы заставить подумать, но чтобы их коллеги подумали, что вот у них были выходные, получается, где-нибудь там, где есть солнце. То есть вот так вот. Один человек из десяти получается, у нас выдумывает романтический отдых со своим партнером. То есть романтический отдых, отдых, ну, отпуск, конечно, будет здесь слишком длинно. Ну, да, отдых. Давайте так. Люди, получается, возрастом от 18 до 24, это вот те самые, которые больше всего врут в социальных сетях. А мужчины врут у нас чаще, чем женщины. И только 20% людей ну, которых интервьюировали, вот это слово, сказали, что они всегда говорят правду в своих постах, ну, или просто в постах. Джуди Джеймс сказала, социальные сети становятся, ну, increasingly, то есть имеются все больше и более, то есть все более и более важными в наших жизнях. И это кажется, или так кажется, или это кажется, мы живем одну жизнь в соцсетях, то бишь онлайн, а другую жизнь в реальности. Итак, когда вы почувствуете зависть в воскресенье вечером, потому что ваша лучшая подруга вот в данный момент, получается, на романтическом ужине со своим парнем в Венеции, остановитесь и спросите себя, а она реально там или она также сидит дома, feeling bored, то есть скучает, чувствует скуку так же, как и я. Вот такая вот статья. Тут очень тяжело перевести дословно, но, надеюсь, основные идеи понятны. Главное, что картинка сложилась. Идем дальше. Part number two. Vocabulary, adjectives, ending, ed and ing. Part A. Look at the two highlighted words in the article. Which word describes how a person feels, a thing or a situation? So try to use boring and bored here. So it's like, number one, how a person feels. And you think of this like boring or bored. And the second one, a thing or a situation. Is it boring or bored? Try to match these sentences in these words. Okay, now let's speak about these type of words or adjectives. First, let's have a look at ED ending, like bored, depressed, relaxed, interested, excited, frightened. ED endings 
mean that someone has the feeling. If you are depressed, it's like you feel sad. You have this feeling. If you are relaxed, it means you don't worry about anything, you are relaxed. Or if you are interested in something, it means you have an interest. I like books and I am interested in books. So, ED ending, it's like someone or something has this feeling, particular feeling. Now, let's have a look at ING ending and it is more complicated. It shows that something or someone is the reason of this feeling. I am interesting person or I am interesting. It means many people are interested in me. That is why I am interesting. Or you can say I am boring. It means that people are bored when they talk to me. I am boring. Or I am frightening, so people are afraid of me. I'm frightened, I have this feeling. I'm frightening, I cause this feeling. Or look, couple of more examples. The book I'm reading now is interesting. I am interested in this book. The film is very boring. I am bored when I'm watching it. The video game is exciting. I am excited when I'm playing it. Zombies are frightening. When I see zombies, I am frightened. So you see the pattern. Read examples one more time and then we move on. Part B. Circle the correct adjectives in the questions below, listen and check. How do you say the adjectives? Do you think Sundays are usually bored or boring? Are you bored or are you boring with your job or studies? What kind of weather makes you feel depressed or makes you feel depressing? Do you think the news is always depressed or is always depressing? What activities do you find relaxed? Or do you find relaxing? Do you usually feel relaxed? Or do you feel relaxing at the end of the weekend? Why, why not? Have you read any interested or interesting articles or books recently? What sports are you interested or interesting in? Number five. Are you excited or are you exciting about your next holiday? Or are you doing anything excited or are you doing anything exciting next weekend? What were you frightened or, or what were you frightening of when you were a child? Do you find storms frightened or do you find storms frightening? Now, circle the correct adjectives in the question below, then listen and check. Four point twenty one. One. Do you think Sundays are usually boring? Are you bored with your job or studies? Two. What kind of weather makes you feel depressed? Do you think the news is always depressing? Three. What activities do you find relaxing? Do you usually feel relaxed at the end of the weekend? 4. Have you read any interesting articles or books recently? What sports are you interested in? 5. Are you excited about your next holiday? Are you doing anything exciting next weekend? 6. What were you frightened of when you were a child? Do you find storms frightening? Okay, great. Now let's practice saying these words. And let's answer this list of questions. 
Look, first I will do it, then you will do it after me. Let's start. 1A. Do you think Sundays are usually boring? For me, Sundays are not boring because I work on Sundays and I like my job. And by the way, I have 10 lessons on Sundays, so I can't get bored. And 1A. Are you bored with your job or studies? No, I'm not. As I mentioned earlier, I like my job and I like my studies and I find English exciting language to learn. Number two. What kind of weather makes you feel depressed? I think when it's hot. No, when it's very hot. I can't do anything. I just sit and wait when it gets colder. So that's why it makes me feel depressed. And part B here. Do you think the news is always depressing? I think yes, it's true. Actually, when you open something to read news, you expect something depressing, yeah? In my opinion, news is always depressing. It's okay, but you can argue with me. So number three. What activities do you find relaxing? Relaxing, yeah, having a bath maybe, or drinking beer in a bar or a pub. Primitive, but I think it will be enough to answer this question. Do you, ah, part B, sorry. Do you usually feel relaxed at the end of the weekend? Why, why not? Uh, no, I don't. I usually try to make a video to do the housework and so on. I don't feel relaxed. Except I don't feel sleepy because I try to get much sleep at the weekend, as much as possible. Number four. Have you read any interesting articles or books recently? Yes, I have. My cousin has written a book and I'm now reading it. It's very interesting. And you know, to read a book that's written by someone you know very well is always interesting. Part B. What sports are you interested in? Parkour, maybe. It is the only sport I am interested in. I can't do it anymore, but I can watch some videos on YouTube, and it's always fun. Next. Are you excited about your next holiday? No, I'm not. I would like to stay at home and make more videos for you, but next holiday... I will be away, and I have no choice. I don't like traveling, but I think it won't be so bad if I try. Are you doing anything exciting next weekend? No, I'm not. I don't have much to say about this. So, number six. What were you frightened of when you were a child? Oh, I was frightened of darkness, of ghosts, of homeless people, of many things, actually. And do you find storms frightening? Storms. Yeah, I hope you know this word, storm. It's a very bad weather. It's very windy. And it depends on the situation. If I know that I'm 100% safe, storms are okay. But if I'm outside and a strong storm starts, I find them very frightening. Because, you know, it can be flying trees everywhere or something, or something can drop on your head. Yeah, so I find storms frightening when I'm outside. Look, I have spoken a lot. Now it's your turn. Try to answer all of these questions and try to give as much information as you can. Let's go. Part number three, grammar. Something, anything, nothing, etc. Part A. Read the tweets. Complete the hashtags with good we can't or bad we can't. Just do it. I think it will be easy.
Look at the highlighted words in A. Complete the rules with people, places, or things. Use something, anything, and nothing for people, places, or things. Use somewhere, anywhere, or nowhere for people, places, or things. And use somebody, anybody, nobody for people, places, or things. Look, this time I will say, listen to example really carefully, because the rules are actually very badly written, but the examples are very cool in this situation. So, listen to the examples very carefully. 4.22 People Somebody has taken my pen. Someone has taken my pen. I didn't speak to anybody all weekend. I didn't speak to anyone all weekend. Did anybody phone? Did anyone phone? No, nobody. Nobody phoned. No, no one. No one phoned. Things. I bought something for dinner. I didn't do anything at the weekend. Is there anything in the fridge? No, nothing. There's nothing in the fridge. Places. Let's go somewhere this weekend. We didn't go anywhere this summer. Is there anywhere to park? No, nowhere. There's nowhere to park. And look, instead of reading these rules, I'd like just to repeat the examples. But okay, let's read it. So the first thing, we use somebody, someone. So you can use somebody or someone. It's up to you completely. No difference in meaning. Something and somewhere, etc. With affirmative verb, when you don't say exactly who, what or where. It's like, I know someone who knows you. So I don't say exactly who it is. So, just someone. And next, we use anybody, anyone, anything, anywhere in questions and negatives. Do you remember some, any, this situation? There are some bags. Are there any people in the park? So, it is almost the same situation. So, we use anybody, anyone, anything, anywhere in questions and negatives. But we can also use something in a request or offer. For example, can you buy some milk? Would you like something to drink? It's okay to use these words in questions. But look carefully. I didn't do anything last night. And it's wrong to say I didn't do nothing because in English we don't have double negatives. So it's like I didn't do anything or I did nothing. That's all. And we use nobody no one, nothing, nowhere in short answers or in a sentence with affirmative verb. Look, if you have no idea what it is, don't worry. Like, practical things will say you more. So just wait. Any, anything, etc. plus positive verb. We also use any, anything, etc. plus positive verb to mean it doesn't matter what, who, etc. For example, you can come any day. It doesn't matter which day you come, any day. Anybody can come to the party, so it doesn't matter who comes, like anyone can come. I can sleep anywhere, it doesn't matter where I sleep, like I can sleep anywhere, even on the hard floor. You can bring anything, it doesn't matter what you bring, like whatever you like, you can bring, you can bring anything. Oh my god, rules are rules. Let's just do some practical things. They are better, right? 
part for C, part A, complete with something, anything, nothing. Are you doing anything tonight? Here I suggest you doing this exercise and using only your intuition. Then just check yourself and you see the results and then you understand many things. Part B, answer with nobody, nowhere or nothing, only these three words. Again, use your intuition. And part C, Answer the questions in B with a full negative sentence. Look, part C, it's a very easy task, but you have to understand what to do. I think it is uh, the most difficult thing in it. Now look, again, try to do these free exercise. Like you just try, I mean, any of your ideas. Then check yourself by watching me doing these exercises for you. Let's go. Now let's start checking these exercises. Part A. Complete with something, anything, nothing, etc. Are you doing anything tonight? Did you meet anybody last night? At least one person, anybody. Next is this one. Somebody phoned when you were out. They're going to call back later. So, we don't know whether it is she or he, we can use they here. So, somebody. Number three. I've seen your wallet somewhere, but I can't remember where. I can't remember where exactly, so it's somewhere. Number four. There is... Uh-huh, interesting, on at the cinema tonight, let's stay in, let's stay in, it's like, let's stay at home, so there's nowhere, oh, no, sorry, there is nothing interesting, something like this. Number five, did see you when you left the house, like, at least one person, maybe, did anybody see you when you left the house? Number six. Did you go exciting at the weekend? Look, here you can use both. So it's like somewhere or anywhere. There is a slight difference in the meaning. Did you go somewhere exciting at the weekend? It's I'm sure that you did go somewhere. And I want to know what this place was. And if you use did you go anywhere exciting at the weekend, I'm not sure, I'm just asking. But the main idea is that you can use both here. It's okay. Number seven. I've bought you something really nice for Christmas. Number eight. I rang the doorbell, but nobody, nobody answered. Number nine. What would you like for your birthday? Anything. I really don't mind, so it doesn't matter. You can buy anything you would like, whatever. And number 10, there is to go swimming, the pool is closed. So the pool is closed, there's nowhere to go swimming, the pool is closed. It's something like this. Okay, I hope you got the main idea how to do this exercise or how to do these type of exercises with anything, nothing and so on. Now let's see B and C, yeah? Answer with nobody, nowhere or nothing. What did you do last night? Nothing. Where did you go yesterday? Nowhere. Who did you see? Nobody. That's something like that. And part C. Answer the questions in B with a full negative sentence. Like, I didn't do anything. Next is, like, yeah, what did you do last night? I didn't do anything or just nothing. You can use both options. And number two, where did you go yesterday? What do we do? Yeah, we just, I didn't go anywhere. 
So you can use nowhere or I didn't go anywhere. It's up to you again. And number three, who did you see? You can use nobody or you can say I didn't see anybody. English is a strange language, isn't it? Okay, let's move on. Pronunciation part four. Part A. What sound do the pink letters make? A, B or C? Look, you have A, B and C. A, egg, B, phone, C, up. You do it like this. Number one. Nobody knows where he goes. So what sound? I think it sounds B, like in phone. Nobody knows where he goes. So you put B into the first gap. Then you do the same for the second one. Now do this task, then check yourself. Four point twenty three one B Nobody knows where he goes. Two C Somebody's coming to lunch. Three A I never said anything. Four C I've done nothing since Sunday. Five. A. Don't tell anybody about the message. Six. B. There's nowhere to go except home. Part C. Listen and answer the questions. Follow the example. What did you buy? Nothing. I didn't buy anything. Or you will hear, where did you go? Nowhere, I didn't go anywhere. Follow these examples and try to answer these questions in the audio. It's a very useful exercise, so try to do it. 4.24 1. What did you buy? Nothing. I didn't buy anything. 2. Where did you go? Nowhere. I didn't go anywhere. 3. Who did you see? Nobody. I didn't see anybody. 4. What did you eat? Nothing. I didn't eat anything. 5. Who did you speak to? Nobody. I didn't speak to anybody. 6. Where did you walk? Nowhere. I didn't walk anywhere. 7. Who did you meet? Nobody. I didn't meet anybody. 8. What did you say? Nothing. I didn't say anything. Part number 5. Speaking. Oh, it's just a primitive speaking, but we like it. Did you have a good weekend? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and a lot of questions here. There are a lot of questions here. Look, my weekends are always boring, so let me just maybe give you some ideas. If you want to answer them correctly, refresh your memory of the past simple, like go, went, do, did, need, needed, have, had, and so on. I hope you remember all of this stuff. And short answers. 
Yes, I did, or no, I didn't. Uh, did you go anywhere exciting on Friday night? Uh, I went to a local pizzeria. For me, it was exciting, but for you, it can it could be really boring. <laughs> so Saturday, did you do anything in the house, cleaning, etc. on Saturday morning? No, I didn't, because I did my housework on Friday, not on Saturday. Did you go shopping? Did you buy anything? Uh, yes, I did. I bought uh, some bread and milk and, you know, some food, something like that. Did you need to work or study? No, I didn't. Saturday is my day off. What did you do on Saturday night? I just walked around the town, walked in the park and got some fresh air. Something like that. So, Sunday. Did you go anywhere nice on Sunday? No, I didn't. On Sunday I had 10 lessons. What did you have for lunch? For lunch I had a soup. Did you do anything relaxing in the afternoon? No, in the afternoon I started working. On Sunday, I mean. Now your turn to speak on them and please say more than I did, because I hope your weekend was more exciting than mine. I hope so. Now do this task. And let's move on. Part 6. Video listening. Watch the documentary The History of the Weekend. Mark the sentences true or false. Look, before you watch a video, you can pause our video and read these statements carefully and understand what to search for or what to hear for. But if you're ready, just watch the video and mark these sentences true or false. Good luck, guys, with that. Hi, I'm Karen. Welcome to my hometown, Manchester. Manchester is a city in the northwest of England. When you think of Manchester, you probably think of our football teams, but there is a lot more to the city. This is the Manchester Museum of Science and Industry. I've come here today because I'm going to find out about the city's link to the British weekend. Like many good ideas, it started right here in Manchester. To us, the weekend is part of our routine and we can't imagine life without it. But there was a time when working people didn't really get a weekend. In the 19th century, thousands of people left their homes in the country to find work in the city. Manchester became the first industrial city and it was the home of the cotton industry. Until 1843, people worked for six days, from Monday to Saturday, and had a day of rest on Sunday when they went to church. The work, like here in a cotton mill, was hard and often dangerous. But in the 1840s, a group of men began to ask local factory owners to give people an extra half day off on Saturday afternoon. One of these men, Robert Lowes, was the great-great-grandfather of the British actor Sir Ian McKellen. Lowes and his colleagues had three reasons for this change. The first reason was commercial. When people worked from Monday to Saturday, they had no time to spend their money because shops were shut on Sunday. The second reason was religious. People were tired from the working week, so they didn't always go to church on Sundays. The last reason was economic. When people had more time off, they could rest more, be healthier, and work harder during the week. In 1843, Lowe's and his colleagues persuaded many of Manchester's factory owners to close their factories at two o'clock on Saturday. By the 1870s, all workers had the same one-and-a-half-day weekend. 
The extra half day made a big difference to people and to society. With more free time, people could relax, shop, and watch and play sports. In fact, Manchester's love of football began at this time. In 1878, Newton Heath Football Club began, and two years later, St. Mark's Football Club was formed. Newton Heath became Manchester United, and St. Mark's became Manchester City. The British weekend has continued to change, and by the 1960s, we had a two-day weekend. Today, we enjoy a very different weekend to our ancestors. We now watch and play sports. We go to the cinema. We eat out in restaurants. Or we go to shopping centres, like this one, the Arndale Centre. Because in the 1990s, the law changed and shops started to open on Sundays. But all these changes haven't been good for everyone. Some people, shop assistants for example, have to work at the weekend and are not paid any extra. Maybe our working week will change again to improve our quality of life. One suggestion is that we make the working week four days and increase the weekend to three days. In theory, this would be better for the economy because more people would have a job. And we would also spend more time with our families. 71% of British workers think Britain would be a happier place with a three-day weekend. Until that happens, have a good weekend, a two-day weekend. Part B. How long is the weekend where you live? Are shops and business open? Do you think this is a good thing? What do you think of the idea of a four-day week or like when you have three days of weekend? So speaking of these questions, the weekend is normal, just Saturday and Sunday. Uh, shops and businesses are open and I think this is a good thing. Why not? What do you think of the idea of a four-day week? And it's a complicated question, but still four-day working week. It sounds really exciting, but in reality or reality, I think it's not possible at all. I don't know why, but people still believe or still think that a normal job is nine to five when you have days off on, on Saturdays and Sundays. But look, there are thousands of jobs that are 24 or seven, like supermarkets, power plants, coffee shops, transport like airports, and so on. And if you want to see a doctor and they work only four days a week, uh, I don't know. What about lifeguards, security, police? I mean, I think you understand what I'm saying, but your opinion can be different. If you don't agree with me, feel free to argue. Now, your turn to speak and to answer these questions. Ох, ну теперь поехали. История выходных. То есть, почему у нас выходные субботы и воскресенья. Привет, я Карен. Добро пожаловать в дом, откуда я родом. Манчестер. 
Манчестер – это город у нас на северо-западе Англии. Когда вы думаете про Манчестер, вы, возможно, думаете про, наш футбольный, ну, про наши футбольные команды. Но существует или есть a lot more, ну, всего побольше в этом городе. Ну, как-то так, криво, но понятно. Так, это у нас музей Манчестера, науки и производства. Я пришла сюда сегодня, потому что я собираюсь выяснить о, или узнать побольше про связь города с британскими выходными. Так же, как и многие другие хорошие идеи, это началось прямо здесь, в Манчестере. Для нас э, выходные — это часть нашей рутины, и мы не представляем, то есть мы даже не можем представить жизнь без этого. Но было такое время, когда рабочие люди ну, не имели, получается, вообще-то не имели выходных. В 19 веке тысячи людей покинули свои дома. Это имеется в виду, то есть не в городе, там в деревнях в этой местности, чтобы найти работу в городе. И Манчестер, получается, стал первым индустриальным городом, ну да, тут без интонации просто стал первым индустриальным городом. И это, ну, он был, получается, домом, э, так, cotton, это у нас хлопок, производство или индустрии хлопка, давайте так. До 1843 года люди работали 6 дней в неделю, с понедельника по субботу. И у них был один день, чтобы отдохнуть в воскресенье, когда они ходили в церковь. Работа такая, как здесь, на, это получается хлопчато-бумажным или хлопком, ну да, хлопчато-бумажным этой фабрике, была тяжелой и часто опасной. Но в 1840-х годах группа мужчин начала просить местных владельцев фабрики, имеется, ну так, да, местных владель, владельцев фабрик, дать людям получается, дополнительные полдня выходных в субботу днем. Один из этих мужчин, Роберт, был, получается, прапрадедушкой, то есть прапрадедушкой британского актера сэр Ян Маккеллен. Это тот актер, который этим «Властелин колец» снимал в роли Гендельфа. Так, Лоус, вот этот мужчина и его коллеги и имели три причины для такой перемены. Первая причина была коммерческая. Когда люди работали с понедельника по субботу, у них не было времени, чтобы провести, ну, а, чтобы потратить свои деньги, потому что магазины были закрыты в воскресенье. Вторая причина была религиозной. Люди были уставшие от рабочей недели, вот поэтому они не всегда ходили в церковь по воскресеньям. И самая последняя причина была экономическая. Когда люди, получается, когда у людей было больше свободного времени, они могли больше отдыхать, были более, ну, более здоровыми и работали усерднее в течение недели. Логично. Так, в 1843 Лоус, получается, вот этот человек и его коллеги убедили множество ну, фабрик, заводов Манчестера, владельцев, то есть убедили владельцев многих заводов Манчестера вот так вот закрыть свои фабрики в 2 часа дня э, в, искр... в, это, в субботу. И к 1870 годам все рабочие имели, получается, ну, одинаковый one and a half day weekend, то есть полторашные выходные. То есть имеется полдня в субботу и один день в воскресенье. Так, а вот дополнительные полдня сделали, ну давайте дословно, дополнительные полдня сделали большую разницу для людей и для общества. Когда у них появилось больше свободного времени, люди могли расслабляться, делать покупки и, например, смотреть и играть в спорт, ну или заниматься спортом. В действительности, то есть по факту, Любовь, вот эта манчестерская любовь к футболу началась в это время. В 1878 году, то есть Ньютон Хэт Футбол Клаб, это просто название этого футбольного клуба, но ну, он начался тогда, и двумя годами позже вот это Saint Mark's Football Club was formed, образовался вот этот клуб футбольный. 
Так, вот этот у нас футбольный клуб стал Манчестер Юнайтед впоследствии. А вот этот клуб стал Манчестер Сити. Ну и британские выходные продолжили меняться. И к 19-му, нет, не 19-му, к 1960 у нас уже было два дня выходных. То есть Today Weekend. Вот это вот интересное предложение. Today we enjoy a very different weekend to our ancestors. Это у нас... То есть сегодня мы наслаждаемся совсем другими выходными, нежели которые у нас были у наших предков. Это вот так вот. Теперь мы, получается, смотрим и играем в спорт, мы ходим в кинотеатры, мы, получается, кушаем в ресторанах, и мы, получается, закупаемся в торговых центрах, как вот типа такого. Это она вот показывала торговый центр. Потому что в... В 1990-х закон изменился, и магазины, то есть, начали открываться по воскресеньям. Но вот эти вот изменения не были хорошими для всех. То есть, не все с этого выгоду получили. Некоторые люди, например, эти работники магазинов, например, вот им, а, вот этим людям приходится работать по выходным, и им еще не доплачивают за это. То есть aren't paid any extra за то, что выходные выходят. Может быть, наша рабочая неделя снова изменится и улучшит наше качество жизни. Одна идея, suggestion, как идея предложения, заключается в том, что мы сделаем рабочую неделю, ну, то есть четырехдневной, и увеличим выходные до трех дней. В теории это будет лучше для экономики, потому что больше... Получается, больше людей заимеют работу, и мы будем, получается, в этом случае, мы будем тратить больше времени с нашими семьями. 71% рабочих Британии думают, что Британии было бы место посчастливее, например, если бы там был бы вот этих трехдневные выходные. Но до тех пор, пока это не случится, всем хороших выходных, have a good weekend, And two day weekend, то есть двухдневных выходных. Но, опять же, это не для всех. У всех все по-разному. Но в целом вот как-то так. Довольно интересная история. Надеюсь, что-то прояснилось. Какие-то слова можете себе теперь выписать. А мы идем дальше. And now, let's have a look at your homework tasks.
When was the last time you were at an airport? Um, about a month ago. Were you going somewhere or meeting someone? I was meeting um, my mother, who was... Uh, she arrived at midnight, coming back from Tenerife. Do you have any plans for tonight? Uh, yes, I do have plans for tonight. I'm going to a party with some friends. What housework do you hate doing? I hate cleaning the bathroom. That's my least favourite job around the house. Is there anything you don't mind doing? I don't mind cleaning the kitchen, because there's usually a lot of food to eat. Have you ever bought something online and had a problem? I've, I've bought clothes online that didn't fit, but that's about it. How organized are you? Uh, not very. Um, I tend to be fairly disorganized, but still get things done. Have you ever missed a train or a flight? Yes. Yes, I was flying to Poland and didn't wake up in the morning and got to the gate as the flight was leaving. Так, первое упражнение выделите правильно прилагательное. Как пережить зиму? How to survive the winter? Первое. Так, если вы в середине долгой, темной зимы и начинаете чувствовать себя, вот опять, иметь эмоцию, depressed, то есть чуть-чуть подавленным себя чувствуете, насчет того, чтобы провести, ну вот, another cold weekend, то есть прохладные, холодные выходные дома, имеется в виду, что они ни о чем не переживайте. Вот некоторые вещи, которые вы можете сделать, чтобы почувствовать себя лучше. Ну, или заставить почувствовать себя лучше, если уж совсем дословно. Get moving. То есть чаще двигайтесь. А, спорт или упражнение – это одна из лучших вещей, которые вы можете сделать. Но помните, что делая только один вид упражнений, может быть, стать скучным. Can I get beat? Uh, получается boring. Скучным. То есть это вот это. Так, so try different things. Поэтому попробуйте разные вещи. Сходите поплавайте, сходите на прогулку, запрыгните на велик и так далее. То есть вот это вот делание одного и того же, того, того же упражнения может быть скучным. Каким скучным? Так, eat chocolate. Ешьте шоколад. Газеты все, получается... Так, recently about reports. Ага. То есть газеты стали какими? Excited. То есть по-другому газеты взбуждоражились, имеется в виду. Недавно про, получается, отчеты, что шоколад полезен для вас. И это кажется правдой. Шоколад, получается, содержит э, вот этот вот элемент, который делает, э, ну или заставляет, нет, ну не заставляет, но который делает вас счастливее по-другому. Или чувств... вы чувствуете себя счастливее. И более... Опять же, эмоцию вы это имеете расслабленными. Про вас идет речь, поэтому more relaxed. Так, теперь у нас. Book a holiday abroad or we, can, we can't away. Организуйте себе поездку куда-нибудь, другими словами. Это всегда помогает ну, сменить обстановку, сделать что-то по-другому. И вот маленькие каникулы где-то, где жарко. Или, например, лыжные каникулы могут означать, что вы... Так, can mean you get to see the sun. 